Welcome, everybody, to Polygon. I'm Charlie Hall, your features writer here, and I'm joined today by someone from our sister site at The Verge. This is science reporter Lauren Grush. Say hello, hello. Lauren. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here and traveling through space today. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a pretty special day. Well, yesterday was a pretty special day, Lauren, um, because, well, we, we found something out in the star yes. system, didn't we? What, what, what was announced yesterday and by who? So uh, the European Southern Observatory announced that they had found a potentially rocky Earth-sized exoplanet around the closest star to our solar system, Proxima Centauri. And it's, it's huge news because A, it's the closest exoplanet we've ever found. And for those who don't know, exoplanets are planets outside of our solar system. Uh, and the, the big news is that it is potentially habitable. Now, that doesn't mean it is habitable. It doesn't mean there are aliens there. It just has this potential because it's in this really nice, sweet spot that astronomers are always looking for called the habitable zone. And that is an area around a star where temperatures are just right so that liquid water can exist on a planet's surface. So it's not that we know there's water and life right. out at Proxima Centauri. It's that it's possible. It's possible. So, it, I mean, and we, like you said, we really don't know a lot about this planet. They, they only think it's rocky because of its size. It's about the size of Earth, just a little over Earth, or it could be like three times the size of Earth, something around there. Um, but usually planets around that size are rocky. Uh, and so that's why they are assuming that. Well, I saw that come up on my phone yesterday. It was actually an NPR notification. NPR radio notified <laughs> me and said, hey, Charlie, you know, we found a possibly habitable planet in, over at Alpha Centauri. I'm like, what? It, that's not what I expected to show up on my <laughs> phone, right. NPR. But that immediately, though, made me think of all of the games in which I'd already been to <laughs> Alpha Centauri. And of course, you know, among them is the very famous Sid Meier game, Alpha Centauri. It's a 4X exploration game where you go to Alpha Centauri. But another one of those games is the one we're playing right now, Lauren, and it's called Elite Dangerous. Have you ever heard of Elite Dangerous? Isn't that a Nicolas Cage movie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bangkok Dangerous? Never mind. No, different, I have not heard of this game. Different game. This is actually a venerable old game out of the UK. I want to say that the first version of it was was built uh, in the 80s or the or very early 90s. Uh, and it is a space exploration game, but this is the latest iteration of it. And it's something that I've shared with our Polygon audience a number of times already, and it's something that I play a lot of. And it is, it is a massively multiplayer space exploration game that that simulates the entire Milky Way galaxy and we actually just left the star base Abraham Lincoln and you can see it's multiple Tauruses spinning there where it's got simulated gravity going on for the the citizens of Abraham Lincoln I can kind of zoom in here and we can look at one of their parks uh, but this is what it's like to live in space in the year 3300 Man, when this awesome. when this game is set. Look at how beautiful that is. Doesn't that look like fun? That would be pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> but let me do a quick U-turn here, because the Abraham Lincoln is actually locked in an orbit around the planet Earth. It actually shares an orbit with Earth's moon. Um, and, and here we are. What I want to do is kind of take a quick look around our solar system. We can kind of talk about where this planet is out at Alpha Centauri, the star Proxima Centauri, actually. Okay. And then then we can go there. We can yes. actually go visit it. We can it. Go, go visit this planet. <laughs> well, it, we'll see if there's anything there, if, if we can get there. But hang on a second. Let me set a, a navigation point here. Let's go take a quick look at our closest neighbor in the solar system, Mars. One moment. I'm going to engage my drive here. How long does it take you to get to Mars in this game? Oh, a couple of seconds. <laughs> oh, if only. <laughs> All right, so Mars is about 270 light seconds away from Earth. 
that at the current speed we're going that would take us about a year so let's kind of amp things up a bit right now we're going four megameters per second on uh, a megameter is actually what do we got here five thousand kilometers so we're going 22 25 30 times 5,000 kilometers per second <laughs> we're going pretty fast Lauren amazing and we are going to come up on Mars here very soon. We're actually going 0.19 the speed of light currently in Elite Dangerous. Now, this rocky planet that they found out at our closest neighboring star system, Alpha Centauri, is 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 where? It's in this, this Goldilocks zone, they call it? Right. Tell me more about that. So it's what what they call it is the habitable zone. And so for... You know, Earth, we are definitely very much in this habitable zone. Um, and But it's different for different types of stars. And so Proxima Centauri, which, you know, this has this planet, is a lot different from our star. It's a lot smaller, and it's a red dwarf, so it's a lot cooler than our sun. Uh, so its habitable zone is actually uh, in a very different spot. It's actually a lot closer to the star. So this planet is... Uh, I believe it's about 5% of the distance between Earth and the Sun. So it's very close to the star, and its orbit lasts something just like 11.2 days. So it, oh, wow. it, its year is very short. Um, its year is 11 days long? 11 days long, yeah. Holy cow. But that, thing, that means it's moving really fast compared to our, our Earth, right? Right, right. Yeah, so, so the term... You should be wary of the term Earth-like. A lot of times when we find planets the size of Earth, people like to say they're Earth-like. But this planet is probably very different from us. It receives a lot more radiation because it's a lot closer to the star. And uh, it's tidally locked, too, I think was another thing they were talking about, which means one side is always facing the star. Just like the moon is tidally locked to right. Earth. Okay. Right. That's why there's so, a dark side of the moon. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, and also, it probably doesn't have seasons either. So it's probably a very different world. But like I said, it is in the spot where temperatures may might be just right for liquid water water to exist. And even then, doesn't mean that it's habitable. It just means that there might be water there. And since water is so valuable for us here on Earth, that's what gets astronomers excited because then maybe you know, life might have been started thriving there as well. But it's probably very different from, from what we think of as life, if well, it is even. We're pulling up on Mars here. And remember how I said it was the year 3300 in this game? Yes. They've terraformed Mars. Oh, I, I figured, so I, Elon Musk has gotten there. He started <laughs> ruling, is doing his nuclear explosions over the <laughs> over the planet. Is that how they would do it? I don't know. Oh yeah, he's well, I don't know if he, that's the only way you would do it, but he's definitely talked about uh, sending like a nuclear bomb at the poles. Uh, All right, welcome back everybody. It's Charlie Hall and Lauren Grush, science reporter for The Verge. Had a little technical snafu there. Lauren, we got close to Mars, started talking about Elon <laughs> Musk, and then my computer crashed. Do you think that's do you think that's ominous? I think maybe uh, we said something and and Elon was not too pleased with it. <laughs> Reached right through the internet and knocked us offline. That's great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, again, we're in Elite Dangerous, which is a new game uh, that's available right now on PC, I believe Mac, as well as Xbox One. You can play this on your console, Lauren. But the reason oh. we're here is because the European uh, Space Observatory discovered a potentially habitable planet near Alpha Centauri, the closest star to Earth. And we were talking a little bit about why, well, about why we can't live on Mars right now. So we were, we were coming in a little close to Mars, but like today's Mars, not Mars in 3300, like why isn't there atmosphere there? Why, why aren't people living on Mars? Well, the atmosphere of Mars, I mean, there are a lot of studies that point to uh, Mars having a uh, a lot of water on its surface and, and maybe even being somewhat like Earth back in its past. Um, but it went through a global climate change. And one of the reasons behind that is because 
the sun stripped away Mars's atmosphere. And so now it has a really thin atmosphere that isn't supportive of biological life like our atmosphere is of Earth. Um, that's one of the theories I believe. I've reported on that like a while ago. NASA had come out with that with some really great visuals about it too. Um, let's see if I can find that. But anyway, yeah, that's just one of the ideas. Okay. So what I thought we would do with, with the remaining time that we have left is I thought we would, we would actually go to Alpha yeah, Centauri. Let's you want to do it? All right, let's do it. Let's, I'm let's going... go meet these aliens. <laughs> Let me yeah, find the so right target here. Uranus, Snow, Neptune. There it is. Alpha Centauri. I'm going to engage your hyperdrive, Lauren. Okay, please do. Where is our target, though? All right, it's a little bit behind us as the crow flies. All right, 4.38 light years. Let's do it. As it goes, that's that's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's the closest star system to us, but uh, 4.3 light years, I believe. I think I did. I was looking at it this morning. It's 25 trillion miles. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah. So uh, just a nice walk in the park. Boom. Oh my we're, God. Wow. That didn't there. take long at all. I told you in the year 3300, the frame shift drive, it's a hell of a thing, Lauren. <laughs> so here we are. This is Alpha Centauri. Right. Next. So Alpha Centauri, so the star system consists of three stars. Uh, they're the two main stars, Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. And that's a, they're a binary System, So that means that they orbit around a center of mass, and it takes them about 80 years to do that. Um, and these are stars that are like our, our sun. So they're yellow, big and bright, like you just saw on your screen. Uh, but Proxima Centauri is a bit of a loner, and it's the one that's actually the closest to us. So it's 4.2 light years away. So and like I was saying, oh, go ahead. So here's what we've got here. Here's... Alpha Centauri A to our left. I've lost my uh, track IR, so I can't really move my head. I'll try and move the ship, though. Um, here's Alpha Centauri A. And over there in the distance, 6,600 light seconds away, is Alpha Centauri B. And just like you were saying, they're locked in a orbit together. They are an orbiting pair. But that's not where the European Space Agency found... European Southern uh, Observatory. <laughs> European Southern Observatory found mm -hmm. this new potentially habitable planet, is it? It's, it's at a third star in this system. Right. So Proxima Centauri, like I was saying, is the loner star, and it's a red dwarf, so it's a lot smaller and fainter, and it is, like, it's uh, about... Well, it's it's at 4.2 light years from Earth. This is 4.3 light years from Earth where we are right now. So Proxima Centauri is closest to us. Um, and it's possible that Proxima Centauri isn't even a part of this star system. Uh, researchers aren't sure. It could be orbiting around the uh, two stars that we see, or it could be just passing through. Um, oh. Right. But it won't leave the area for millions of years. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's a very slow time shift uh, in terms of the star's mov movements. Okay. Well, in the fiction of Elite Dangerous, which is the game that we're playing, um, travel happens between large stars. What I mean by that is the frame shift drive locks on to large gravitational signatures and blah, 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 moves ships using those gravitational signatures. Because Proxima Centauri is a smaller star, because it's orbiting so distantly from this central pair, Alpha A, Alpha B, in the center of this star cluster, we weren't able to fly directly there from Earth. So what we did is we flew into that central pair of stars, and now we're flying out from there. And I'm going, okay. Lauren, I'm going as fast as I can here. I'm going 50 times the speed of light, okay? I'm, oh, wow. I'm going to do what I can to get us there in a timely fashion, but it's still going to take a little while. That's how big this Alpha Centauri star system is. Uh, but I got another surprise for you here. Let me show you oh. this. This is Elite Dangerous's galaxy map. And it's, it's pretty awesome. Check this out. So this ah. 
that? You are here, Lauren. <laughs> Way over right. here in the unfashionable western spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Wow. That's where we are. And you can see all the other distant galaxies and nebula kind of in the distance of mm-hmm. our own Milky Way galaxy. This is the galactic plane right here. This is kind of the origin, the flattest part of our Milky Way galaxy. So let's zoom on in. Let's see if we can go find our origin, Sol, the name of our sun. And it'll take us right there. Boom. So hey. here is our star. And here's a map of our star system. Oop, no, that's Alpha Centauri. Hang on a second. I want to go to Sol, please. There it is. So here is Sol. Uh-huh. And I've done a lot of travel in Elite Dangerous. And I'm here to tell you, a single star system is actually fairly rare. So what, what are the other kinds oh. of star systems that are out there in the Milky Way galaxy? Oh, I mean, there are, you name it, there's something like it. I mean, you've got binary, you've got stars around dwarfs. I believe I reported on something really about um, an asteroid found in a triple star system. Uh, you know, what what we're finding is that exoplanets are pretty common, and not just exoplanets. But habitable planets, exoplanets might be common as well. Um, one of the researchers I talked to said that maybe 30%, that's kind of the rough number uh, of exoplanets that they found are potentially habitable. And really? the fact that, yeah, and the fact that we found a potentially habitable one, and when I, let's be clear here, it's potentially habitable, <laughs> not habitable. Um, the fact that we found one on, at the closest star that we could poss- possibly have just kind of is the icing on that cake that, yeah, we may have a bunch of potentially habitable planets in our universe. They're, they aren't rare. You know, this is something that might happen a lot. So here's that map now of the Alpha Centauri system. You've got the, the primary Alpha Centauri. Then you've got Alpha Centauri B. As you can see from the chart, they're locked in orbit. I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate, but I do know that uh, Frontier, the folks that make this game, go to great lengths to make some star systems accurate to what mm-hmm. we know them to be. But this kind of indicates that this larger uh, planet here, Lagrange, they're calling it, mm-hmm. is, in or- is in part of this binary star system and itself has three smaller planets orbiting it call them moons if you will Mm -hmm. uh and then way out here is where we're heading this is proxima centauri so this is a class m star how does that how's that different from sol the star that earth orbits uh well like i said it's a red dwarf so it's a a lot smaller and it's a lot cooler and it's a lot fainter than our star. So it's, uh, it's like I said, it's going to be a lot different. Like this, if this planet that we found is going to be in a lot different spot and it, this, the, and the star is going to look a lot bigger in its sky, even though it's a smaller star than the sun. Now in the fiction of Elite Dangerous, mm-hmm. they actually put a planet here and it's called oh. Eden. <laughs> so maybe this is the the planet we need to go to. Maybe it is. And in in the year 3300 it's got a cooperative government. It's in an expansive state. It's got 100,000 wow. it's got 100,000 people on it. And you know, this has long been a dream of science fiction authors and game designers themselves mm-hmm. to put a planet so close to our home. But I mean it's it's not that close at all. Like how, using today's technology, how long would it take us to get to Eden? Uh, well, yeah, using modern propulsion, the idea is that we could send a spacecraft there, but it would take tens of thousands of years. I'm sorry? Tens of thousands of years. Oh my God. Yeah. But I don't know if you have um, heard of this kind of exciting new initiative called Starshot. Uh, it was a project pr- proposed by Yuri Milner and Stephen Hawking, and it's this idea of sending a tiny, tiny nano satellite 
to the Alpha Centauri system using a giant laser from Earth. Not really? kidding. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So basically the laser would propel a sail, kind of like a solar sail, um, a very thin sail connected to the satellite. And it would be moving so fast uh, that it would cover the distance from Earth to Alpha Centauri in just 20 years. Uh, so it'd be moving at, I believe, what, the fifth, that would be the fifth a speed of light. Um, but it's, it's tiny, right? It's very, very tiny. So you have to, you know, you'd have to put a camera on it. You'd have to put a communication system on it, a power system on it. And there's a lot of uh, ifs about it, and a lot of people are very skeptical about it. But it, the idea of something getting there in, in maybe our lifetimes is exciting. Wow, that that's very interesting. But we'd have to, you know, miniaturize it or or think very differently about the propulsion itself. That's that's fascinating. Yeah. So, I mean, what? How did they discover that this potentially habitable planet was even here? How do you how do you see something that far away? Like, what's that's that technology thing. look like? You don't really actually see it. In fact. That's why we know so little about this planet is because we haven't actually seen it directly. Um, a lot when we when we're looking for uh, exoplanets, there's mm -hmm. a lot of indirect methods that we use. You can directly image exoplanets. It has been done. It's very rare though, and and directly imaging this one's going to be tough because it is so close to its host star, and so because of that, the bright light coming from the red dwarf, even though it is a fainter star than our sun, it still overwhelms the light that's reflecting off of the exoplanet. So it's very hard to distinguish the light coming from Proxima Centauri and the light reflecting off of this planet. So the way that they found this one is they didn't really look at the planet at all. They, in fact, studied Proxima Centauri and how it moved. So when these planets orbit around the star, they have a small bit of gravity. And that gravity slightly tugs on the star and causes it to wobble just a little bit. And we can actually see these wobbles from Earth. And one of the ways we do that is through something called a spectrograph. And so whenever a star wobbles, whenever it moves farther away from Earth or closer to Earth, um, its light shifts very slightly. The wavelengths of light shift very slightly. So we can actually measure these shifts in light and and see when it is wobbling. And then we can use that wobbling to determine how far away this planet is and you know what kind of size we think it is. So that's why they think that's why they know where it's located and they know the minimum size of what the planet should be. Um, but we don't know much more than that. How much does the size of this potentially habitable planet factor into its habitability? And by that I mean, you know, can you can we have an Earth that's a hundred times larger than our current Earth and have it be a habitable body? Or does it need to be about the same size as our Earth? So the reason they like Earth-sized planets, so when in the search for alien life or, you know, life outside our solar system, uh, anything as close to Earth as possible is good, right? Because we know that it worked here, so uh, <laughs> it probably is going to work on something <clears throat> something similar to us. Um, but the problem with things being a lot bigger is that you usually become a gas giant at that point. And at that point, you're not going to have something that you can walk on. Like a rocky surface is good because, you know, we can... Well, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's, it's, it's much more conducive to having things that can live on it, right? Uh, gas giants will probably just destroy anything inside of them. <laughs> I mean, but then again, you know, this is only, we're only really looking for biology that mimics our biology, right? I mean, we don't really know what other types of life could look like because we've never seen it before. So there's, it's very possible that there is life that looks completely different from Earth life. Um, but 
in the search for extraterrestrial life, <clears throat> we're looking for stuff that we know to be life. So that that's usually biological life. Well, I was actually out about, um, I want to say about 3,000 light years from Earth around Christmas time <laughs> in, right. in yeah. Elite Dangerous. And I found a very interesting binary system. Uh, I forget the name of it now, but it was near it was near Ross. It was about a thousand years from my base out at Ross two sixty three. You know Ross two sixty three. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I actually found in in the fiction of Elite, I found an ammonia based life form. So it was a planet with an atmosphere, and in the fiction of this game, it was it was a life form instead of being carbon based, mm -hmm. it was actually ammonia based. So that, yeah, that's entirely possible, and and that could lead to different types of planets but but shouldn't should they all need water though could you have a life form that that doesn't need a planet with water on it like i said i mean we don't know i mean the reason like i said earlier the reason that we like looking for water is just because of how essential it is for us here but i mean it, it's very possible that you know water isn't needed for life and, and if that's the case you know then we might have a hard time knowing what another life form would look like because we don't really know what to look for what's their key ingredient you know so it, the possibilities are are quite endless but in terms of our search it is a narrow search uh, for what we're looking for now I, I warned you when we started this trip that Proxima Centauri was was a bit of a hike. <laughs> right. And I think we're seeing that right now. I'm actually traveling at 1,242 times the speed of light. I'm going pretty damn fast. And it's still looking like we are a ways away from Proxima Centauri. We may not actually be able to make it there in this stream. But that just, it, it speaks to the scale at which this particular star system exists and how it's so completely different than our own star system around around the, the star Sol. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, can you repeat that again? I didn't hear you. Oh, no big deal. It just, it speaks to how different this Alpha Centauri system is than our own star system oh, around right. Sol. It's, it's just a completely foreign way that, that all these planets and multiple stars are connected and lined up. And it's, it's challenging even to get there in this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think, yeah, what I'm reading here is that, yeah, Proxima Centauri could leave in, in several million years, or it may have an orbital period around the other two stars that's 500,000 years long. <laughs> oh, it so, could be a very complex, almost like a figure eight kind of orbit yeah, where it goes yeah, yeah. around the smaller star, and then it or, no, journeys. No, no, the, the red dwarf could be orbiting around the two pair, oh. but it takes a very, very long time. Yeah, and I think we're seeing from some of these distances that that's true. This this map we're looking at here in, in Elite is not to scale. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. <Yeah. laughs> so, well, Lauren, it's been it's been a hoot <laughs> to have you. It's it's so infrequent that I get the chance to bring folks onto my starship here in Elite Dangerous. I really appreciate you taking the time and visiting with us and kind of explaining. Okay what's going on here. Um, anything that you wanted to add about this discovery or anything you wanted to point to over at Verge? Um, well, yes, you should definitely read our story at The Verge. I'll also have a follow-up coming up soon about uh, ways we would look for extraterrestrial life on exoplanets. Short answer, it's really hard. <laughs> um, but it's very, it's very interesting. I'm very fascinated by all the techniques that astronomers use because like I was saying, you can't just look at these exoplanets. You have to basically infer that they exist based on all these different movements of other objects in the universe. And ex looking for life on them is kind of similar. It's all these different crafty, creative techniques. And I just think that's so interesting. Um, and like I was repeating earlier, there is a lot of hype whenever we find planets like this. And I don't want to underemphasize. I think this is probably one of the most significant exoplanet discoveries ever. Um, but like I was saying earlier, we don't know if it's habitable. You know, it's only potentially habitable. So it might not be habitable at all. And, uh, you know, I think it's 
it's just it's okay to be optimistic, but just remember that there are these caveats that go along with finding a, a planet like this. Well, for more on that, you can tune into Verge, theverge.com. Lauren, thank you so much for joining me today. I Thanks for having me. I promise you I'm going to leave this running for as long as it takes, and I will get you a photo. Okay, good. Of Proxima Centauri before the day is out, all right? Great. I would love that. <laughs> thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care.